علی و شاگری دو سلم لسوئر دو سلم لسوئر that I will be faithful that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance and bear true allegiance to the Federal Republic of Nigeria to the Federal Republic of Nigeria General Gowon was overthrown in a palace coup in July 1975 and succeeded by General Murtala Muhammad, who was in turn assassinated in a abortive coup on February 13, 1976. He was re replaced by Olusha Guabasanjo, formerly his second in command. General Basanjo basically continued the policies and plans of the Mohammed regime. Mutala Mohammed, a Hausa from the North Kano state, ruled for only seven months. Within that short period, he entered himself to most Nigerians because of his strong leadership and the radical reforms he introduced in domestic and foreign policies. He purged the public service ministries, universities, parastatus and other government agencies at the federal and state levels of individuals accused of being corrupt, indolent or inefficient. He set up a panel headed by Justice Ayo Rikefe to advise on the creation of more states. His report led to the creation of seven additional states in 1976. Motala Mohammed also set up a panel under Justice Akintola Agoda to consider whether a new federal capital should be created because of the congestion in Lagos. The panel recommended Abuja in the southern part of the former northern region as the site of a new capital in economic matters. Motala Mohammed introduced the low profile policy, the radical departure from the institution of the Cohen era. Although he retained the framework of military federalism, Motala Mohammed removed state governors from the me membership in the Supreme Military Council and created a new body in which they were included at the center the National Council of States. Because this body was chaired by the head of state and subordinate to the SMC, its creation underscored the subordinate position of the state governments. This arrangement enabled the head of state to exert greater control over the state governance than had been the case under Gowon. In the era of foreign policy, Motala Mohammed pursued a vigorous policy that placed Africa at the center and that involved active support for liberation movements in the continent. Of all Motala Mohammed's actions, however, the one that had the most lasting consequences was a program of transition to civilian rule that he initiated before his death. The program was carried through as planned by his successor, Tobasanjo. The stages of the transition agenda include the creation of more states, the reform of the local government system, the making of a new constitution, the formation of parties, and finally, the election of a new government. The transition process was to culminate in the handing over of power to civilians on October 1st, 1979. In February 1976, Motala Mohammed was killed in an unsuccessful coup led by Colonel Boka Dinka and officers from the Middle Belt. The coup appeared to be an attempt by Middle Belt officers to bring back Gowon from his self-imposed exile and reinstated him as head of state. Obasanjo, a Yoruba and Satana, became head of state, although unfavorably compared 
in Port Allah Muhammad initially. He succeeded in many areas of his administration where the more intransigent Murtala Mohammed might have failed. Obasanjo became an ardent political ruler, determined not to exacerbate North South and Muslim Christian schemes in the country. In the program of transition to the Second Republic, the military leader's primary concern was to prevent the reoccurrence of the mistakes of the First Republic. They believed that if the structures and processes of government and politics that had proved inappropriate in the First Republic could be changed, a stable and effective civilian government will emerge. The transition was therefore designed to address those fundamental issues which were historically divisive and to establish new political institutions, processes and orientations. Except for the census which remained problematic, most issues that threaten the stability and survival of the Federation were addressed. The revenue allocation process was altered based on the recommendation of technical committee, despite the politician rejection of its recommendation. Local governments were also streamlined and made more powerful by the 1976 reforms. The second aspect of the transition involved the making of a new constitution and appropriate institutions. A constitution drafting committee, CDC, was appointed in 1975 under the chairmanship of a leading lawyer, voting Williams. For Nigeria, the draft, as we understood it, was to be prepared by us for publication to the public so that all Nigerians would express their views on what has been submitted. And in 1977, a constituent assembly composed of both elected and appointed officials examined the ratified the draft constitution. After final ratification by the SMC, the constitution was promulgated in 1979. Political parties were formed, and new corrective national bodies such as the Code of Conduct Bureau, Corrupt Practices, Investigation Bureau and Public Complaints Commission were established. The most far reaching charges of the transition were made in the area of institutionalizing a new constitutional and political system. At the inauguration of the CDC, Motala Mohammed outlined the objectives of transition as the constitution of a federal system of government with constitutional law guaranteeing fundamental human rights, maximum participation, and orderly succession to political power. To avoid the pitfalls of the First Republic, the new constitution was designed to eliminate political competition based on a system of winner takes all, broad consensus, politics to a national base, eliminate over-centralization of power, and ensure free and fair elections. The SMC suggested that these objectives could be met by recognition of national rather than sectional parties, 
controls on the purification of parties and the creation of other states, and an executive presidential system similar to that in the United States. In addition, the federal character of the country was to be reflected in the cabinet. An independent judiciary was to be established as well as corrective institutions. The draft constitution incorporated these elements. When the CA met to ratify the constitution, a few issues were highly volatile. The most notable was the matter of Sharia law, which Muslims argued should be given appellate jurisdiction at the federal level. Most Christian members of the assembly vehemently opposed this. Only the intervention of the head of the state resolved the situation. Although the Sharia clause was deleted from the constitution, the cleavage between Christian and Muslim groups persisted. Other controversial issues included the creation of more states, the determination of an age limit for participation in politics, intended to eliminate most discreted politicians who had actively participated in politics in the First Republic, and the scope of the executive president's powers. After the CA completed its work, the SMC added a few amendments, including use of Hausa, Igbo, and Yoruba as additional official languages in the National Assembly and the applying the federal character principle to the composition of the Armed Forces Officer Corps. By Decree No. 25 of 1978, the 1979 Constitution was enacted. The Constitution differed from that of the First Republic in 1963, in that it introduced a United States type presidential system in place of the parliamentary system. Previously, the executive branch of government derived its powers from the legislature under the 1979 constitution. The president and vice president, as well as state governors and their deputies, were elected in separate elections. The elections had the federation and the state respectively as constituencies. Furthermore, while the Senate was largely a ceremonial body in the First Republic, the new constitution gave the Senate and House of Representatives co-equal powers. There were other provisions in the 1979 constitution that aimed at eliminating past loopholes. The first was the federal character principle which sought to prevent the domination of power by one or few states, ethnic groups, or sections at the federal center, and by one or more groups in the state and local government areas. The principle required that the composition of the cabinet, boards, and other executive bodies, as well as appointments to top government positions, should reflect the federal character or diversity of the country at the particular level of government. This principle also applied to the composition of the armed forces. This principle was extended to the distribution of national resources, such as the sitting of schools and industries. The question of party politics became a constitutional matter. In view of the need for a limited number of national political parties. The constitution specifies certain criteria that parties had to meet in order to be registered. The name, embed, or motto of the party could not certain any ethnic or religious connotation or give the party the image of a sectional party. Membership in the party should be open to all Nigerians irrespective of ethnic or religious affiliation. The party headquarters must be in the federal capital, and the executive committee of the party should reflect the federal character of the country. The tax of registering political parties and conducting elections was given to Federal Electoral Commission, FEDECO. The necessity for national parties resulted 
on the conviction that the, this unity of the First Republic was again engendered by the regional parties then operating. When the ban placed on political activities in 1966 was lifted in September 1978, at least 53 political associations were formed. 17 of them applied for registration, but only five were registered. The National Party of Nigeria, NPN, the Nigerian People's Party, NPP, the United Party of Nigeria, UPN, the Great Nigeria People's Party, GNPP, and the People's Redemption Party, PRP. In 1981, a sixth party, the Nigeria Advanced Party, NAP, was registered. Contrary to the expectations of the drafters of the Constitution and the military rulers, most of these parties resembled the ethno-regional ones of the pre-1966 period, although legally parties were required to transcend ethno regional basis. The only exceptions were the NAP, which proclaimed itself a new breed party, and the APN, which despite its regional antecedents, was probably the only national party in Nigeria. The UPN was the resurrection of the AG with its Yoruba club. The MPP was the rejuvenation of the NCNC with its Igbo core and strands of middle bed support. The PROP recalled Kano's NEPU and the GMPP, which appeared initially to be a new minority's formation, had its strength within the Kanuri section of the North. Apart from the PROP, which flickered as a radical party, and the populist NEP, the other parties appeared to be parties of the wealthy class or those who aspired to join it for whom politics was a means of enriching themselves and consolidating their material base. Given this character of the registered parties, it can be argued that the perceived need to balance the power groups in the country rather the constitutional requirements decided which parties were registered. In the 1979 presidential election, MPN candidate Sheu Shagari was declared the winner, even though many people thought he did not meet the full requirements. He obtained a simple majority of the total votes cast in the Federation but failed to get 25% of the total vote cast in 13 states of the Federation. The latter was the general accepted interpretation of the constitutional requirement that the winner of the presidential election should obtain 25% of the total votes cast in two thirds of the 19 states of the Federation. Shagari obtained 25% of the votes in 12 states, but got only percent in the 13th state. When Fedeco declared Shagari the winner, in the absence of the, any legal explanation or guardians in the electoral decree, a whole of what the presidential candidate and leader of the UPN led other defeated candidates and their parties to challenge the declaration in the electoral tribunal and later in the Supreme Court. Well, according, according to the law, we have 14 days within which to file it, but we are not waiting for 14 days. When? Well, we we'll file it between today and tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, the ball is in their court. They will meet us in the appeal court. I don't see them having any good of chance. If they want to waste their time and money, it's their business. So you said that you really do not have any opposition in this case. So the judgment is extremely sound, and uh, one could not have hoped to get a better judgment. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are you optimistic? How can I? It's not my way to give advance back. If they appeal, they will meet us in the appeal court. The laws are clear, the parts are clear. And they know they, they, their case has no merit whatsoever. I mean, they, they are doing, if they appeal, they are not doing law now, they are doing politics. But the challenge was to no avail. 
the controversy led to strong anti-MPM, anti-Shagari sentiments in several states controlled by the other parties. Once the MPM succeeded in consolidating power at the center, the attraction it had was strong enough to tear the other parties asunder. Consequently, the history of the Second Republic is with inter-party and intra-party schemes and federal state conflicts. At the domestic level, the MPN controlled federal government embarked on political expedient but on economic projects, such as establishing a federal university in every state commissioning iron and steel plants that remained unfinished in 1990, and indiscriminately awarding contracts to build the new federal capital at Abuja. To finance these projects, the government relied heavily on foreign loans and aid, while the external debt of the country increased. The lot of the common citizen worsened. The global economy recession in the early 1980s and the collapse of crude oil prices in the world market accelerated the economic decline of the Second Republic. By the time Shagari decided to initiate IMF-inspired austerity measures under the Economic Stabilization Act 1982, the problems of the economy required more drastic measures. This act, however, provided the blueprints for the austerity measures subsequently introduced by Buhari and by Babangida. The demise of the Second Republic was accelerated by the tension generated by the 1983 general elections, which, which were similar to those of 1964-65. As in the earlier elections, two major political camps were involved in the contest. The MPN and the Progressive Parties Alliance, comprising the UPN, the MPP, and factions of the PROP and the GMPP. The MPN won landslide victories, even in states considered traditional strongholds of other parties. In several places, violence erupted, and every election was contested in court. A number of the electoral verdicts were submitted in view of evidence that results were falsified. Under these circumstances, the military intervened December 1983. Fulfilled their promise to end 13 years of military rule in 1979 when they voluntarily handed over the reins of power to the civilians. The essentials of good government as seen by the people of this country were contained in the provisions of the suspended 1979 Constitution, particularly Chapter 11 thereof, which relates to the fundamental objectives and the direct principles of state policy. In addition to its methodical conduct of all the stages of the transition to civilian government in 1979, the Obasanjo government initiated numerous reforms in public life. Attempts were made to introduce greater probity in the activities of civil servants and other public officials. The main vehicle for this process was the establishment of public complaints commissions in all states of the Federation and in the capital. Despite the publicizing of particular cases of abuse of office and corruption, little progress was made in stopping the spread of this cancer in the society and economy. The Obasanjo administration expanded the economic indigenization program started under Gohom. It also used the land use decree of 1978 to re rationalize the country's haphazard tenural systems, to reduce the crippling land speculation and curb the frequent 
the litigation over individual and communal property rights. It was hoped that these reforms would facilitate the acquisition of land for modern agricultural purposes. In a similar vein, the Obasanjo regime launched Operation Feed the Nation to counter the rapid rise in food exports. None of these efforts were successful, but the programs indicated the kind of strategies that Nigeria would have to adopt to alter its economic imbalances. In view of the complex process of transition to civilian rule and many reforms introduced in the four years of the Mohammed Obasanjo governments, those regimes seem in retrospect to have tried to do too much too soon. In the final year he was in power, Obasanjo introduced many austerity measures and insisted on a low profile for all government officials. He was aware that Nigeria, despite its oil wealth, was still largely an underdeveloped country and its business passes mainly agents or intermediaries for foreign businesses. What I have done today in my own backyard should therefore serve as symbol of what all Nigerians from all walks of life should be doing at this time of the year. Grow more food and make Operation Feed the Nation a successful operation. Thank you very much. Such a solitary attitude was soon forgotten. However, as the successor regime rode the crest of a renewed of surge in oil prices, spent resources faster than they could be realized, and left the country deeply in debt and its economy nearly in shambles when it ended in 1983. President Cheo Shagari presidency was marked by a dramatic fall in international oil prices, which had a devastating impact on Nigeria's economy. In response, his government attempted to expel foreigners who had come to Nigeria during the days of the oil boom. An estimated 2 million people, mostly Ghanaians, literally walked home in what at the time was one of the larger movements of African peoples. The fall in oil prices ignited an orgy of corruption among the country's elite, which Sheo Shagari appeared unable to control. There was also a revolt based in Kano by a radical Islamist millenarian court. The Maitasin, which is sometimes compared to Boko Haram, 